In this video, we're going to look at the energy levels and wave function for the one dimensional particle in the box. So in a previous video, we introduced this physical problem of the particle in a one dimensional box, basically a particle that's free to move inside the box, but then encounters an infinite potential well at the edges of the box. So as far as getting the wave function for this system, um, since it's essentially a free particle inside the box here, uh, a good place to start would be the free particle wave function. So we'll go ahead and write that down here. So the free particle wave function, psi of k, is going to be a e to the i k x plus b e to the negative i k x. Where in this case, this is a superposition of two functions. A and B are coefficients for each function respectively. And K can actually take on any value in the case of the free particle, right? So this is a good place to start. We'll start with this wave function since we know that it behaves as a free particle inside the box. Now, the only thing that we have to consider is how do we uh, figure out how this wave function is going to change to include the uh the edges right the fact that this particle cannot uh cannot go past these infinite potential wells at the edge of the box so basically what this sets up these uh infinite potential walls at the edge of the box sets up what's known as boundary conditions right so boundary conditions and this is just technically a mathematical term that is just basically saying that at, a, at certain points, a function has to obey certain constraints or conditions um, in order to be an acceptable solution. And in this case, our wave function, we're starting from the free particle, but all we have to do to make this the particle in the box wave function is just consider those boundary conditions, right? And so basically the boundary conditions in this case, since we know that the wave function has to be equal to zero anywhere where the potential is infinite, right? This sets up boundary conditions at the box where at psi of zero, right? So for if, if X is equal to zero, then we know that the wave function has to be equal to zero. And when psi, when X is equal to L, psi is also gonna have to be equal to zero, right? So the wave function has to be zero at those points where the potential becomes infinite. So at the edge of the box, we have to have a wave function that is equal to zero, right? So I should put in general, right? This is a function of X. So when you uh, plug in zero, you should get zero. When you plug in L, you should get zero. So what we're gonna have to do here is take our free particle wave function and apply these boundary conditions so that this is an acceptable solution to this specific problem, right? So what I'm gonna wanna do first here, I wanna re-express this wave function using uh, Euler's relationship, right? So let me, um, let me re-express the wave function. Using Euler's relationship, I'm always, you know, not sure how to pronounce this. It's, you, some, a lot of people say Euler, Euler, whatever. Euler, Euler's relationship. So I'm gonna use Euler's relationship in order to re-express this wave function in terms of trig functions, trig identities, and, um, and being able to separate the imaginary and real components for this function. Right, so um, so let's do that. So if we re-express this wave function, so we got psi of k of x, it's gonna be equal to re-expressing this first term, we get a is equal to cosine kx plus i sine kx. And the second term, you're gonna have uh, cosine kx minus I sine KX, right? So all we've done here at this point is just take each one of these functions and just re-express them uh, using Euler's relationship, right? So now what we can do is actually group uh, like terms here and actually re-express it um, in a different way. So what we can do is group together to A plus B and uh, what will be A minus B terms once you uh, distribute the a and b respectively, we will have a plus b cosine kx plus 
uh, plus A minus B, I sine KX. Right now, that factorization may seem a little weird in the spirit of Euler's relationship. The spirit of Euler's relationship is always to keep this imaginary and real component separate. Right. Um, functionally, that's what what Euler's relationship is, is used for a lot. So I factored it this way so that we could still keep the um, or we could kind of easier see how this this uh, imaginary and real component is separated out. OK, so what I'm going to do here is redefine uh, the constants and just re-express them in terms of a single variable just out of convenience uh, in this case. So I'm going to re-express this A minus B times I. I'm going to re-express that and just call it C. And for A plus B, we're just going to call that D, right? So after doing that, we can just rewrite this uh, expression as C sine kx plus d cosine kx. Okay, so now that we have our wave function re-expressed uh, in terms of uh, Euler's relationship, right? Now we have some trig functions here. It's gonna be a little bit easier for us to evaluate what's gonna happen at these boundary conditions. So that's exactly what we wanna do next. We wanna be able to investigate what's going to happen at each of the boundary conditions. So first I want to investigate what's going to happen at psi when uh, X is equal to zero, right? What happens to our wave function when X is equal to zero? So when X is equal to zero, right? That means our wave function has to be equal to zero, right? So we have C sine KX plus D cosine kx, all of that has to be equal to zero, right? So all of that has to be equal to zero. Um, now, if we have x equals zero, right? So actually, let me go ahead and plug in our zero here, right? So what we're going to get here is that we're going to have psi of zero, uh, and then we're going to have sine zero and cosine zero. Right. So sine zero, cosine zero. Right. Because what you want to do is plug in zero for X. Right. So we plugged in zero for X here for the wave function. We know that this has to equal to zero. Well, this first term here is actually fine because um, sine zero is going to be zero. So this whole term is going to become zero. So that term is good at the boundary condition. However, this term here. Right. We know that cosine zero is going to be one. So because of that, in order for this to be equal to zero at the boundary condition, the coefficient D must be equal to zero. So let me write that down. So since sine zero equals zero and cosine zero equals one, then that means that D must be equal to zero, right? So in order for sine, uh, in order for psi uh, zero to be equal to zero, then this constant D must be equal to zero because this will be zero, that will be one, so D would be equal to zero. That would be the only thing that would be left algebraically, right? So we've, we've solved for a little bit of this and we've kind of simplified our wave function, right? So this simplifies our wave function. Right. So we know if D is going to be equal to zero, then this whole term drops out. So our wave function simplifies to just be psi KX is going to be equal to C sine KX. Right. So that's going to be our form of the wave function for the particle in the box after evaluating this one boundary condition. But we have another boundary condition that we have to investigate. And that is going to be this guy, right? It has to, the wave function also has to equal zero at L, right? So let me actually start this on another slide, get more space. So, okay. So we know that we have that form of the wave function and we know that at L, right? So when psi is equal to L, we're going to have C sine KL, this must equal zero, right? Right. 
So in order for this to equal zero, right, we know that C can't equal zero because if C equals zero, then that means our wave function equals zero everywhere, which essentially means that the particle vanishes. So we know that C can't equal zero. So what we have to uh, ensure is that sine KL equals zero, right? So, okay, let me, let me actually write that down. So C cannot equal zero or else the particle poof vanishes. So that means that sine KL must be equal to zero, right? And so this is a part of the utility of writing this, rewriting this wave function in terms of uh, Euler's relationship, because now we have a periodic function sine where we know there are points where it equals zero. It's gonna repeat itself, right? So we know where it would be equal to zero. So in order for this to be equal to zero, we would have to have KL be equal to some repetition of pi, since sine pi is going to be zero, right? Sine pi is zero, sine two pi, three pi, four pi. So in order for this to be zero, we know that sine KL is zero if KL is some repetition of pi. So I'm putting an integer in in front of pi, just any repetition of pi, pi, two pi, three pi, 500 pi, right? Any pi uh, would give you uh, zero for the uh, trig function sign, right? So now we can actually solve for K here. So this is huge. Being able to solve for K, we can plug that back into our wave function. So K is gonna be equal to N pi over L, right? So that gives us the, uh, the K that we need here to fit the boundary condition that psi equals zero at L, at the length of the box. So now that we've evaluated both of the boundary conditions, we can write our acceptable wave function that actually, um, that, encounter, that takes into account the different boundary conditions. So our full form of the wave function of psi, right, having accounted for both of the boundary conditions is gonna be psi of n, right? Now we're using this uh, variable n since I'm gonna plug this in for k, right? That's gonna be equal to some constant c sine n pi x over l, right? So basically all I did here was we solved for k after considering this boundary condition all I did was just plug that back into the wave function, right? So just plugging that back into the general wave function, keep in mind that the general wave function that we were looking at was psi k of x is equal to c sine kx. All I did was plug this k in here to get this form, right? Okay, so, um, so this yields our acceptable wave function and we can get an acceptable energy expression as well. So the acceptable energy expression here is going to be n squared h squared over 8ml squared, right? So I didn't go through all the details, but basically this is if you apply your Hamiltonian to the wave function, you'll get this energy as the energy eigenvalue, the acceptable energy eigenvalues. Okay, so the last thing that we have to do here, um, one more piece of business is what is C, right? C is going to be our normalization constant, right? So we have to normalize this wave function as the last step. So we want to normalize in order to get C, right? So basically in order to do that, we've done this before, but just kind of showing it here, right? You just basically have to square get the probability density, right? So for this wave function, that would be C squared integrating from zero to L of sine squared N pi X over L, right? DX, this has got to equal to one, right? So all of that when it's normalized should equal to one. So when you solve this integral, right? You'll get, still have C squared on the outside you'll get L over two as a result from solving this integral of sine squared, right? That has equal to one. 
And so at the end, you get C is equal to square root two over L, right? So now if we just plug that back in, we get our final normalized wave function, right? So that's gonna equal square root two over L sine n pi x over L. Okay, so this is your final normalized wave function for the particle in the box. This is your normalized energy expression for the energy levels of the particle in the box. Okay, so um, so this gives you the, uh, the wave function and the energy level. So keep in mind what we've done here. Basically, we have applied the boundary conditions that exist for the particle in the box in order to get the wave function and the requisite energy expression as well. Okay, so in the next video, we'll look further into this energy expression, see what the energy levels of the particle in the box mean, and, uh, and talk about some properties of the energies.